Welcome to Say You Really Want to Learn Latin's Introduction to Latin Pronunciation. Learning to speak Latin in the way that a Roman might have heard it 2,000 years or more ago is not entirely straightforward. One huge problem we obviously have is the Romans aren't here to help us. But we've got a pretty good idea of what we think it sounded like. Um, and I'm just going to crack straight into telling you the way that most people believe Latin to have been pronounced. My pronunciation won't be brilliant and I apologise for that. There are a couple of handicaps that I have with my uh, speaking of Latin. The biggest is I can't roll my R's and that's a real problem because the Romans always rolled their R's. But anyway, I'm going to get straight into it and I'm going to begin by explaining how the vowels work in Latin. As you know, vowels uh, are A, E, I, O and U. And in Latin, a vowel could either be short or long. A short A was pronounced a, like the English word cup. So we have the Latin verb amor. A long A is pronounced like the English word calf. So it's ah. So A is either a or ah. The letter E, if short, it would be like in the English word set. E. And if it's long, it would be like the noise in the English word stare. Air. So e and air. A short I is like in the English word bit. So the Latin for he will love is amar bit, e, short eyes, e. A long eye is rather like the noise in the English word b, e, and e, o. A short o is as in the English word lot or hot. And the long o, my teacher always used to say it's like the French word beau which is great if you can speak French. O, O, and O. So the Latin for I love, amor, you. So a short U is like in the English word put, U. And a long U is rather like the noise we get in the English word root, U. Now when we're wondering whether a vowel should be pronounced as a long sound or a short sound, in my book, uh, in So You Really Want to Learn Latin, the long vowels are marked as long with a little line over the top of them. That line is called a macron. And only vowels that are to be pronounced long are marked with a macron. If the vowel is not marked with anything, you should assume it's short. Just occasionally, I will mark a vowel as being short with a little thing. It looks like a U over the top of the letter. Uh, it's called a brev, I think. Normally because there is a tendency to pronounce the word as if it were long, and that is to help remind you that it is a short vowel. Best example of that that I can think of just now is the Latin for I is Ego. Again and again you will hear people saying, oh yes, I know the Latin, but I, it's ego. It isn't. It's ego. O. Short O. And again, a very, very peculiar area, uh, for which I apologise, is that some vowels can be pronounced either long or short, and it depends on the context whether to pronounce it long or short. This applies in Roman poetry and in Roman plays where uh, scholars over the years have discovered that a vowel could only have been pronounced long in one line of poetry or whatever, and in another they find that it could only have been pronounced short. And therefore you have a word which you're not sure, should I pronounce it as a long vowel or as a short vowel? There are a small number of such words in my course, so you really want to learn Latin, uh, and they are marked as such. The mark you will get is a combination of the macron, the line over the top, with the little u. And that combined mark is, is called marking the vowel as 
ankeps, which is the Latin word for doubtful. Examples would be ibi, the word for there in Latin is ibi, and it's either ibi or it's ibi. The Latin for where is ubi or ubi. Something that is worth knowing is that the combination of letters n, s or n, f, that combination always follows a long vowel. So if you have a Latin word where there is a vowel followed by n, s or n, f, the vowel will always be pronounced as long. And what is a little bit peculiar is that that rule applies even across what is called word junction. So if one word ends in the letter N and the next word begins with the letter S, the vowel at the end of the first word gets lengthened by the fact that there is an S or an F coming up. So for example, the Latin for in the field is in agro with a short i for in in agro the latin for in the wood is in silva now what's happened is the latin word in which is normally a short i when you try and put the in in front of a word that begins with an s you end up with that combination i talked about of a vowel followed by n S. The nice short Latin word in becomes in. So if you see that in the book and you think he's gone mad, he's changed his mind about whether in is short or long, that explains it. Please don't worry about it too much. The man who taught me Latin um, was really fussy about this sort of thing. He was an absolute legend, um, but very, very fussy about how Latin was pronounced. Uh, and he told me, you simply can't get that sort of thing wrong. So, in his memory, I'm going to try and keep getting it as right as I possibly can. Now for diphthongs. A diphthong is where two vowels are pronounced together as one sound, not as two. In English, we have diphthongs in a word such as boil, the O and the I, it's not boil, it's boil. In the English word sea, uh, you know, the big blue wobbly thing that mermaids live in, the E and the A are a diphthong. It's not sea, it's sea. So we need to learn what the diphthongs sound like in Latin. So the Latin diphthong AE is pronounced like the English word I. AE is I. The Latin for the girls is puellae, A-E-I. A-U, that diphthong, is pronounced like the English word now. So the Latin for a sailor is nauta. A-U is au. Those are the most common ones, but other ones to look out for are E-I, uh, which would be like in the English word rain. U-I, which would be a little bit like the French word oui, if you know your French, French for yes is oui, so U I would be oui. O E, not very common, but if you come across it, it would be boil. And the one that no one can get right, E U, it's a sort of E noise. I'm not even going to try any harder than that because it, it happens very rarely. Well, the Latin for alas which sort of means, oh dear, is eho, and you've got an, a short e, e, and then an h, and then e, u, eho, and that e noise at the end is my attempt at the diphthong e, u. Okay, now moving on to the consonants. Um, the ones I want you to look out for, first of all, the letter c is always hard, k, never soft, s. So our old friend Julius Caesar was, of course, Caesar. He, he was not s anything. His name was Caesar. Then we've got the dreaded R. The letter R is always rolled or trilled. And that's the one I'm going to have to leave you 
to sort out yourself because I can't roll my R's. Um, it's that lovely noise you hear people uh, making. I can't do it. But the letter R always rolled. And just something to look out for is if there are two R's together, like in the Latin word that means land, which is terra, you should be rolling the double R in that word for twice as long as you would just roll it if there was only one R. So you get these lovely noises, which I'm afraid I can't make, but I hope you can. The letter S is a S noise, never a Z noise. So it's like the word bus. I'm going on the bus. It's not like I've got business to do. So S always s. The letter V uh, is pronounced as if it were a W. One of the things people remember about Julius Caesar is he famously said, wainy, weedy, weaky. Spelt with a V all the way through, but it's wainy, weedy, weaky, not v anything. GN is a difficult combination. It crops up quite often. The Latin for big, for example, is spelled M-A-G-N-U-S. G-N in Latin was pronounced as if it were N-G-N. The Latin word that means big is mangnus. Where you have a G and an N, just pretend you had an N and a G and an N, and you get that noise. A bit like hang nail, the ng, that, that noise. Latin didn't have a J, so poor old Julius Caesar, instead they used the letter I. So the letter I in Latin actually doubles up. There is a vowel, I, which is I, and there is a consonant or I, which is creating the noise in Julius Caesar. Yeah. So it's, it's very much like a Y. And then finally, one rather silly thing I always think, the letter M at the end of a word is said to be nasalized. Not a very nice sort of concept, really. The Latin for uh, I was loving, amabam. Because the word is ending in an M, you've somehow got to nasalize that M. Amabam. And it... It kind of sounds as if it's going back up your nose. A real purist, uh, like my teacher Theo Zinn, would make sure that when you have a word ending in an M, you, you kind of nasalize the M noise. A marbum. Okay, and on to some slightly simpler things. Um, and these rules uh, are interesting to study, but actually what's peculiar is... If you think about how English works, you'll find that the rules are pretty much the same. And this is how you stress a Latin word. In other words, where you put the emphasis in the word. And there are some very, very simple rules for this. A word of two syllables could only be stressed on the first of the two. Never stress the last syllable of a two-syllable word. The Latin for I love is Amor, with the stress on the first syllable. If we have a word of more than two syllables, if the penultimate syllable is a long syllable, then you stress it. If it is not a long syllable, you stress the one before. I just need to tell you that we've learned that vowels can either be long or short. What you also need to know is that syllables are either long or short, depending on, on the one hand, whether the vowel in that syllable is long, and if it is, then that syllable, by definition, is long. But you can also have a syllable that contains a short vowel, but which the syllable itself is long because it contains the short vowel, followed by two consonants. So a vowel followed by two consonants, 
creates a long syllable. The Latin for a girl, for example, puella. In that word, we've got a short u at the beginning, pu, and then we've got a short e, e, and then we've got two l's, and then finally the last letter is a short a, a. So the word has got a short u, a short e, and a short a, but the middle syllable of that word, puella, gets lengthened by the fact that the e is followed by two consonants, and that creates a long syllable. The rule of stress tells us that if the penultimate syllable of a Latin word is long, you stress it. And if it's short, you stress the one before. So our word puella is a really good example of that. The final syllable, a, uh, we can ignore because you never stress the final syllable of a Latin word. Come back to the e vowel of puella. The e itself is short, but because it's followed by two consonants, you get a long syllable, puella. But if that penultimate syllable had been short, we would have stressed the syllable before that. So a word like regitis. Now, regal is the Latin for I rule. And in the present tense, it goes rego, regis, regit, regimus, regitis, regunt. Regitis is because it's a three-syllable word. The final syllable you would never stress. The one before, it, is a short syllable and it contains a short vowel. So you mustn't stress that. You have to come one further back and you get to the first syllable, re. So regitis. I hope some of that made sense. Uh, the present tense of amor, which is one of the first things we learn uh, in the Latin course, you may have wondered, if you've watched that video, why uh, it goes amor, amas, amat, amamus. Suddenly we've stressed the different syllable. Amatis, amant. So if you go back uh, through the rule we've just learned about stress and work out which of the syllables are long and which are short, you'll see that it's a perfect illustration of where to stress a Latin word. Now that's a lot to cope with. I'm sorry, it's, a, it's quite a difficult subject. Um, I can't pretend I'm an expert. I love the language. I love translating it. I love writing it. I'm not very good at pronouncing it. And for that, I apologise. But I uh, hope that has helped. Don't forget, we've got the whole course on Fridays. Uh, new videos released every week. We've got a little grammar course which will help you with all the grammar you need for uh, learning Latin. So plenty to uh, get stuck into with that. Hope it helps and see you next time.